Hello everyone. Today we're going to be solving AQA GCEC Chemistry Higher Tier Paper 2 Specimen 2018. This one is the part one of the question paper where we're going to be solving from question number one to question number five. This question is about organic compounds. Hydrocarbons can be cracked to produce similar smaller molecules. The equation shows the reaction for a hydrocarbon C18H38, which has been cracked to produce an alkene and many alkenes. Which product for the reaction shows is an alkene? An alkene has a general formula of CnH2n plus 2. So we can see C6H14 is an alkene. Table 1 shows the boiling point flammability and viscosity of C18H38 compound compared with other hydrocarbons shown in the equation. Which letters A, B, C, D shows how the properties of C18H38 compare with the properties of the other molecules. So obviously it will have the highest boiling point, the flammability will be the lowest and viscosity is going to be the highest. The more carbon you have within your compound, the more viscous it gets. So A will be the answer. The hydrocarbon C4H8 was buried in air. Incomplete combustion occurred. Which equation A, B, C, D correctly represent the incomplete combustion? C4H8, all right. First of all, it must be buried with O2 because oxygen is diatomic. So we're going to have 4O2 and 6O2. With 4O2, we have incomplete combustion for CO and 4H2O. This is incomplete combustion. Whereas with 6O2, the CO2 produced is complete combustion. So B will be the answer. Propanoic acid is a carboxylic acid. Which structure A, B, C, D shows propanoic acid? Propanoic acid prop means 3 carbon. So propanoic acid must contain 3 carbon. So we are cancelling the ones that has more than 3 carbon. So C will be the answer. Propanoic acid is formed by the oxidation of which organic compound? So if we have propanol, alcohol, if we oxidize it, we're going to get propanoic acid. For example, ethanol can be oxidized to ethanoic acid. Similarly, propanol can be oxidized to propanoic acid. Water from a lake in the UK is used to produce drinking water. What are the two main steps used to treat water from lakes? So first of all, step one will be filtration to remove solid particles that are within the water. We will pass it through filter beds to remove solids and then and step two will be sterilization. This process is done to kill the microbes and this is usually done using ultraviolet light, ozone or chlorine. Explain why it is more difficult to produce drinking water from wastewater than from water in lakes. Wastewater purification requires many different processes because it contains, all right, many organic matter for example you know from human waste and um, many other wastes that are included in some of the detergents all right toxic chemicals such as detergents that can be harmful microbial bacteria inside it so all of this needs to be removed so it requires many many different steps and processes some countries are making drinking water from seawater Complete figure one to show how you can distill salt solution to produce and collect pure water. Label pure water and salt solution. So we're going to draw the round water flask. We're going to give a heat source. We are going to place this in a container where we're going to collect the water. How could the water be tested to show it's pure? Give the expected result for the test for pure water. Purity of any substance can be you know, tested using boiling point. So we can determine the boiling point of the water and it should be fixed at 100 degrees Celsius. Why is producing drinking water from sea water is expensive? So because it requires a lot of energy. So energy is expensive. That's why this process is expensive. Figure 2 shows the test tubes a student set up to investigate the rusting of iron. This is the method used for each test tube. Measure the mass of nail using a balance. Link the nail in the test tube for 6 days. Measure the mass of nail after 6 days. So we have 6 situations. Test tube number 1, test tube number 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Iron nail with water, iron nail with dry air. Iron nail with water, painted iron nail. In water, painted iron nail, scratch. And water, galvanized iron nail, scratch. And then there is water. So we can see there are six different conditions that are presented here. We will see, we can notice that there is no rusting in number two. There is no rusting in number three, four, and six. There is only rusting in one and five. What is the resolution of the balance used? We can see that balance can measure up until two decimal places, two zeros. So two zeros, for example, 0 0.01 can be written as one into 10 to the power of minus two. So, 1 into 10 to the power of minus 2 grams. 
Calculate the difference in percentage increase in mass after six days of the nail in test tube one and the nail in test tube five. Give your answer to three significant figures. So for the test tube one, what we're going to do is we're going to find out the mass, all right, uh, in the beginning of the experiment and after the experiment, 8.91 minus 8.45, which gives us 0 0.46. Then we're going to divide the 0 0.46 divided by the initial mass 8.45 and then we're going to multiply it by 100%, which gives us 5.44. So this is for test tube 1. Now for test tube 2, so test tube 5, we can see it's a 9.37 and 9.45. So 9.45 minus 9.37, which gives us 0 0.08. Then we're going to do 0 0.08 divided by 9.37. 7 times 100, which gives us 0.854%. Now we have to find out the difference in percentage increase in mass. So 5.44 subtract 0.854. This will give us 4.59. So answer to 3 signals we get 4.59 will be the answer. Use the results of the student's investigation to draw conclusion about the factor affecting the rusting of iron. Include an evaluation of the effectiveness of different coating at preventing rusting of so when concluding, we find out the nail rusted in test tube 1 and test tube 5. Nail did not rust in test tubes 2, 3, 4. So we can, we can conclude that the nail rusted in test tube 1 and 5. However, the nail did not rust in test tube 2, 3, 4. Test tube 2 did, did not have water present. And test tube 3 did not have air or oxygen present. Whereas in test tube 4, the paint stopped it from rusting. The test tube 6 was scratched and galvanized, did not rust. So we can conclude both water and oxygen is needed for rusting. Coating that prevents water and oxygen can prevent rusting. Galvanizing is better than paint or oil. Galvanizing is most effective at stopping rusting even if the coating gets scratched. Rust is hydrated iron 3 oxide. Complete the word equation for the reaction. So when iron is reacted with oxygen along in the presence of water, it produces hydrated iron 3 oxide. Plastic and glass can be used to make milk bottles. Figure 3 shows the percentage of milk bottles used from glass between 1975 and 2010. Right. Plot the points and draw the line up. Figure 3 shows the percentage of milk bottles made from materials other than glass between 1975 and 2010. So the total percentage needs to be 100. If in, in, in a percentage of plastic uh, milk bottles, made from glass is 95%, then um, made from other materials will be 5%, or oh, there will be one plus here. In 1980s, it is 90%, so it will be 10%. Just we have to make it total 100. So 1985, it is, uh, we can see it's 70, 78%, so it will be opposite of that, which is uh, 22%. 1990, it is uh, 50 58%, so it will be opposite of that, so it will be 42%. 1995, it is 30%, it will be 70%. 2000, it is uh, 18%, so it will be opposite of that, which is 82%. 2005, it is 10%, so it's going to be 90%, or with other materials. In 2010, it's 5%, so it is 95% with other materials. Because the total amount of bottles made will be 100%, so easy to find out. Table 3 gives information about milk bottles. When you are making glass milk bottles, we use sand, limestone, salt, soda lime glass is made. Requires a high temperature. We can use the bottle several times. We can use the bottle in only one size, which is 0 0.5 dm cube, and 50% of it is recycled. Whereas plastic bottles are made from crude oil, they are made from HDPE. The production is enough from naphtha. All right, naphtha is already a very important fraction, so it's very limited in supply. It requires high at 850 degrees Celsius only can be used one time, but a variable range of bottles can be made and only 10% of it gets recycled. The question says, evaluate the production of use of bottles made from soda lime glass and those made from HDPE. Use the information given in your knowledge and understanding to justify your choice of material for milk bottles. Glass has two stages in the production of soda lime glass, whereas HDPE has three stages in the production. So there are fewer stages in glass production, so it can be technically quicker. Glass production requires higher temperature, so it will require more energy from fossil fuels. Glass bottles can be reused. Cleaning will cost money, however, to reuse the glass bottles. Whereas other glass products can be made from recycled glass. Plastic can has greater range of sizes. However, both are produced from limited raw materials. You know, glass comes from uh, soda lime glass. You know, the material is limited. All right. And a higher percentage of recycled material in glass preserves the raw material in comparison with that of the HDPE. This question is about the temperature of Earth's atmosphere. Give one reason why it is difficult to produce models for future climate change. 
So, you know, uh, the reason why it is difficult to produce models for future climate change is mostly because of the complex systems that we have within the Earth. There are many different variables and many alternative theories that come about, all right, when actually dealing with future climate change models. Describe how carbon dioxide helps to maintain temperatures on Earth. Carbon dioxide allows short wavelength radiation to pass through easily to the Earth's surface. However, carbon dioxide absorbs the outgoing long wavelength of radiation, which is basically infrared radiation. And since it absorbs and it reflects back to the Earth, the Earth remains warmer. Figure 4 shows change in mean global air temperature between 1860s to 2000. Explain how human activity activities have contributed to the mean trend shown from 1910. So we can see from 1910 there is a general increase in temperature caused by increasing greenhouse gases. So we can say you know the main reason why we have this is burning of fossil fuels which caused more carbon dioxide to be added and deforestation which caused more carbon dioxide to be added to the atmosphere but less carbon dioxide to be absorbed. And we from 1910 we also have a higher and higher amount of cattle production. Now we know that cattle uh, by its digestion process produces methane which is a very very uh, you know potent greenhouse gas. And from 1910, we also have an increase in landfill. Uh, so when we use landfill, all right, to put our trashes, we basically uh, produce methane gas, which can then act as a greenhouse gas in total. So guys, that's all for this particular question paper. Thank you for joining the video and see you in the next video, guys, in the part two. Bye-bye.